I am Ahmaral Gurazova, a senior lecturer. Dear students, you are welcome to the second lecture, Identity and Intercultural Communication on Introduction into Intercultural Communication course. Viewing the lecture, students should be able to define intercultural communication, list and summarize the six identities of humans, and at the end, be able to discuss how intercultural communication affects interpersonal relationships. In focus, of the lecture is identity and ethnocentrism, multicultural identity, prejudice and discrimination. Intercultural communication occurs when people of different cultures, cultural background interact but this definition seems simplistic and redundant. To define intercultural com communication, it is necessary to understand the two root words, culture and communication. There is no doubt that identity plays a key role in intercultural communication and serves as a bridge between culture and communication. It is through communication with our family, friends, sometimes with people from different cultures, that we come to understand ourselves and our identity. And it is through communication that we express our identity to others. Knowing about our identity is particularly important in intercultural interaction. Conflicts may arise when there are sharp differences between who we think we are and who others think we are. We examine the relationship between communication and identity and the role of identity in intercultural communication. We define identity. We focus on development of special aspects of our social and cultural identity, including those related to gender, age, race, or ethnicity. Identities emerge when communication messages are exchanged between persons. This means that presenting our identities is not a simple process. Let's try to answer the question. Does everyone see you as you see yourself? Probably not. Different identities are emphasized depending on whom you are communicating with and what the conversation is about. In a social conversation with someone, we are attracted to our gender or sexual orientation. Identity is probably more important to us than our ethnic or national identities. And our communication is probably most successful when the person we are talking with converts, confirms the identity we think is most important at the moment. Our identities are formed through communication with others, but societal forces related to history, economics, and politics also have a strong influence. To grasp this notion, think about how and why people are identified with particular groups and not others. What choices are available to them? The reality is we are all pigeonholed into identity categories or contexts even before we are born. Now there is an interesting idiom in this expression in my last sentence to put something somebody in in a pigeon's hole usually used uh, uh, disapprovingly and means to form a very fixed often wrong opinion about what type of people or thing someone or something is. So this uh, idiom is taken from Cambridge Dictionary. Imagine two children on a train that stops at a station. Each child looks out from a window and identifies their location. One child says that they are in front of the door for the man's room. The other says that they are in front of the door for the women's room. 
Both children see and use label from their sitting positions to describe where they are. Both are on the same train, but describe where they are differently. And like the two children, we are positioned by our background and by society influences how and what we see, and most important, what it means. We communicate our gender identity and popular culture tells us what it means to be a man or a woman. For example, some activities are considered more masculine or more feminine. Similarly, the programs that people watch on television, soap operas, football games and so on affect how they socialize with others and come to understand what it means to be a woman and man. Our expression of gender identity not only communicates who we think we are, but also constructs a sense of who we want to be. We learn what masculinity and femininity mean in our culture, and we negotiate how we communicate our gender ability to others. As we grow, we tap into cultural notions of how someone our age should act, look and behave. That is we establish an age identity. In traditional societies, we distinguish three stages – children, adult and elders or olders. But Bradley distinguishes the five generational major identities – childhood, youth, young adulthood, midlife and old age. Generation is a common identity that is cemented by similar experiences of consuming cultural go goods such as music. Racial identities are based to some extent on physical characteristics, but they are also constructed in fluid social contexts. The important thing to remember is that the way people construct these identities and think about race influences, how they communicate with others. Once ethnic identity reflects a set of ideas about one's own ethnic group members. It typically includes several dimensions, self-identification, knowledge about the ethnic culture, that, uh, that is, traditions, customs, values and behaviors, and feelings about belonging to a particular ethnic group. Ethnic identity often involves a common sense of origin and history, which may link members to ethnic groups to, uh, to distant cultures in Asia, Europe, Latin America or other locations. Ethnic identity thus means having a sense of belonging to a particular group and knowledge of something about the shared experiences of group of members. We all have a physical ability identity because we all have varying degrees of physical capabilities. We all handicapped in our way by our height, weight, sex and age, and we all need to work to overcome these conditions. And our physical ability, like our age, changes over a lifetime. For example, some people experience a temporary disability, such as breaking a bone or experiencing limited mobility after surgery. Others are born with disabilities or experience uh, incremented disability or have sudden outset disability. The number of people with physical disabilities is growing. In fact, people with disabilities see themselves as a cultural group and share many perceptions and communication patterns. Part of this identity involves changing how they see themselves and how others see them. For people who become disabled, there are predictable stages in coming to grips uh, with a new identity. The first stage involves a focus on rehabilitation and physical changes. The second stage involves adjusting to the disability and the effects 
that it has on relationships. Some friendships will not survive the disability. The final stage is when the individual begins to integrate disabled into his or her own definition of self. Here at the end of this slide, I suggest you a list of disability euphemisms used towards disabled people. Religious identity is an important dimension of many people's identities, as well as a common source of intercultural conflict. Often religious identity gets confused with racial, ethnic identity, which means it can be problematic to view religious identity simply in terms of belonging to a particular religion. For example, when someone says, I'm Jewish, does this mean that this person practices Judaism or views Jewishness as an ethnic identity? When someone says that person has a Jewish last name, does this confer a Jewish religious identity? Historically, as an ethnic identity, Jews have been viewed as a racial group and ethnic group and a religious group. Drawing distinct lines between various identities, racial, ethnic, religious, class, national, regional, can lead to stereotyping. For example, Italians and Irish are often assumed to be Catholic. Intercultural communication among religious groups also can be problematic. Religious differences have been at the root of conflicts from the Middle East to Northern Ireland, to India, Pakistan, and Bosnia-Herzegovina, the traditional belief is that everyone should be free to practice whatever religion they want to. But conflict can result from the imposition of the religion, religious beliefs on others who may not share those beliefs. Religion traditionally is considered a private issue and there is stated separation of church and state. However, in some countries, religion and state are inseparable, and religion is uh, publicly practiced. Some religions communicate and mark their religions differences through their dress. Other religions do not mark their members through their clothes. For example, you may not know if someone is Buddhist, Catholic or Lutheran, because these religious identities are less obvious everyday interactions may not evoke them. Today, a growing number of people do not have clear racial, ethnic or national identities. These are people who live on the borders between various cultural groups. While they may feel torn between different cultural traditions, they also may develop multicultural identity, an identity that transcends one particular culture and feel equally at home in several cultures. Sometimes this multicultural identity develops as a result of being born or raised in a multiracial home. The United States, for example, has an estimated 2 million multiracial people, that is, people whose ancestry includes two or more races, and this number is increasing. The development of racial identity for multiracial children seems to be different from either majority or minority development. These children learn early on that they are different from other people and that they don't fit into a neat racial category, an awareness of differentness stage. The second stage involves a struggle for acceptance, in which these children experiment with an ex and explore both cultures. They may feel as if they live on the cultural fringe, struggling with two sets of cultural realities, and sometimes being asked to choose one racial identity over the other. In final stage, self-acceptance and assertion, these children find a more secure sense of self.
This exposure to more than one culture norms and values often leads to a flexible and adaptable sense of identity, a multicultural identity. Prejudice is judging without knowledge or examination of the value, valuable information. The question, why are people prejudiced? First, their judgment function, whereby people hold certain prejudices because it may lead to social reward. People want to be accepted and liked by their cultural groups and if they need to reject members of another group. Then prejudice serves a certain function. The second one, the ego defensive function. Then discrimination is the resulting behavior of a negative attitude toward an outgroup. Ethnicity, gender, age, sexual orientation and other characteristics. Prejudice is an attitude while discrimination is avid behavior to exclude, avoid and distance oneself from other groups. We may conclude that the relation between language and identity is rather strong. Only through communication we can express our identity to others. The understanding of language, identity and intercultural communication would benefit from more discussion between members of cultural group members. Be ready for the review questions. When you prepare for your lectures and seminars, use the following list of literature.